Oh, you're like a social justice warrior on the internet. Somebody asked what my most controversial opinion was. Maybe it's that. Hello and welcome to this very chill video uh, between all the madness. If you haven't been here before, hi, my name's Lena. I make videos about consumerism, books, being in your 20s, that kind of thing. But today we're just doing a very cosy, non-committal, <laughs> unthemed Q&A and I'm going to do some makeup which isn't my strong point, but that doesn't stop me. And today I have to honor my favorite thrifted thing that I've, I found on Depop for months. And it's this pom-pom jumper. <laughs> the one thing I was worried about when I ordered this was that there was no picture of the back of the jumper. So I was a bit worried that I wouldn't be able to like lean back properly or I'd have like some kind of pom-pom related injury, but no. It's naked on the back, we're good. I need to make a makeup look that, that honors this jumper. Uh, and I'm using this picture for reference. This is Katie Revel. If you don't follow her on Instagram, you should. She's so good at makeup. I'm gonna list everything that I use in the description below. Some of it is low plastic makeup, zero waste makeup if you want. Not all of it is, because I ain't perfect. And there's a video about that up here. Let's go. The first question is, if you could ask the queen any two questions, what would they be? Well, firstly, I just, and this is something I need to know from the whole royal family, is what are their opinions on the crown? I love that they're allowed to make it because there's so much in this country. Like there are like certain laws that you can't do stuff against the royal family. Um, so I love that this has been possible to be made. Um, I personally would not be able to stave off the curiosity if there was like a five season show about my life and my family. Uh, so I'd be Im I'm really impressed if she didn't watch it. Or maybe she just like pays somebody else to watch it for her and give her the, like the top line updates. But I'd love to know what she thought of it, particularly of her the depiction of her childhood, because I actually think that opened my mind up to like how indoctrinated the royal family must be and how like the human rights abuses within it i think uh extend to the queen <laughs> i'd love to know how accurate the depictions of how she was schooled were and, and how she was talked to as a child about her role and about the non-consensual aspects of what her life had to be like and then my second question because you know i, I want to keep it light but i can't i'd love to know whether i don't think i'd push her to make a, like an answer about whether she approves of the idea of monarchy because uh, i imagine that's a question for her and her therapist but i would love to know just theoretically from her perspective if she did want to de-escalate the riches and the power of the monarchy would that even be possible because i often used to think of the role of queen as like head of everything but she's actually kind of not and i think the institution might be stronger than her and i don't know how much power she actually has to give away her money because it's not kind of technically her money the it sounds very complicated and i'd be fascinated to hear a breakdown of like if that would even be possible <laughs> Another question, what is the best meal you've eaten recently? I appreciate your guys' priorities. I feel like we are similar in so many ways. Dismantle the monarchy and best food. So I recently went to this cafe and I got a, because basically I'm not vegan, but when I am out and if there is a vegan option, like my loose rule is I have to order it. And it's made me like try loads of different stuff, like opened my brain up to things because my the extent of my vegan cooking is very poor, but I also think it's good for me to see what is possible and what is possible to make tasty with, uh, with vegan options. So I got this roasted cauliflower flatbread thing and it had rare bit scotch bonnet jam, crispy shallot and pickled onions on it. And it was kind of like, a very tasty strong pizza and it really hit the spot for me i feel like i was like i if this was on offer maybe i could give up pizza maybe i could <laughs> it was so good it sounds so weird but it was incredible favorite item of clothing that kind of has to be my dog lines i know it's a cliche i really like me from Mopolis growing up <laughs> They are the shoes that make me feel the most like myself. And I have this brown pair that I wear all the time. You've seen it in my leopard print video. And as far as something designed and made by somebody else without you in mind can make you feel like yourself, 
it does they just they just make me feel like myself and they're very comfy and they don't make my feet feel like they're too wide because i have feet that are size seven breadth ways but size five length ways like they're incredibly wide feet <laughs> they don't try and make me anything i'm not keeping up with the light topics how do you feel about abortion uh, abortion i feel great about abortion have i have had a one no would i totally i just i don't think and this is something i didn't i used to be against abortion by the way when i was a teenager but i'm so the opposite way now mainly from reading about the facts around it and the experiences of people who have needed them and i honestly the older i get the more strongly i feel that even the people who want to be parents before they have children really really freaking struggle so if you're not sure or if you don't want to there is like literally no universe in which you should be forced to do that and i think also like the idea of like when a fetus becomes a person is like quite culturally constructed i don't think it has much basis in reality it's, it's more of like a state of opinion <laughs> well you know you're getting too conscious controversial for a q a like let's move let's move on if you could adapt a book into a musical what would it be this is a great question so bear with but i think just just hold this in your head i think normal people would make a great two-person musical kind of irish folk songs once meets the last five years i think with the right with the right writer maybe they bring seth lakeman on with the right writer i think that could be really cool would i attempt to write it absolutely freaking not it sounds impossible but i recently watched this musical called edward shackleton loves me and it's a two-person musical that is just so imaginative and so brilliant that it's really like oh and also this musical called jen and john uh, i'm really into two-person musicals at the moment for some reason and i think there's a lot of potential with them so if you've watched those you probably could envision it i think it would be cool also the housekeeper and the professor which is a book set in japan about a um, aging mathematical professor who loses his memory and the housekeeper and her son who he befriends because of the way sondheim did sorry this is really niche if you don't care about musicals i'm sorry the way that sondheim did sunday in the park with george where he did a lot of like musical stuff around stippling where it was like and like linking the idea of like writing a play about a painter to like what he was painting and the, and like the music linking to that imagine if you could do that with maths curious incident and the dog in the nighttime had like an aspect of maths to the show and i think that like a musical around maths would be sick maybe it already exists let me know but housekeeper and professor of the musical just saying favorite comfort watch okay so that the usual answer to that is the sound of music or julie and julia but i recently was in need of comfort and turned to animals <laughs> it's probably not everybody's comfort film it might actually send you into a place of like existential crisis but it's, it's a kind of like late coming of age story and about how this one woman can't finish her freaking book and i can't that can't be more relatable to me and the way it's shot is so comforting there's loads of like really cool sound design in it that really makes you feel like you're there and i just find it a really comforting film i i'm not going to defend it because i know it's probably not a comforting film for everybody but uh, a bit more about how you feel about your poetry book coming out so i promise this wasn't a plant uh, but i do have a poetry collection coming out in july it's my first one and it's with burning eye books and it's available to pre-order on water zones if you be so kind <laughs> i hate doing i don't know why i feel like for this stuff it really makes me feel a bit weird but yeah generally i'm really excited about it i kind of feel that it's not gonna be for everybody and that's okay i know that poetry isn't for everybody um and i've tried to write this in quite like an accessible like you don't need to be a poetry scholar to understand it and that was like my intention so i am i think i am like people will probably say like it's not like literary enough or it's not like it's not serious enough but for god's sake it's called bargain bin rom-com it's supposed to be a little bit silly in places i'm re i'm just genuinely like it's obviously if you've watched my channel for a while you know it's been one of my ambitions to have something published so i'm just i'm really psyched i feel like i'm probably not gonna have a wedding i'm probably definitely not gonna have a baby there's gonna be no milestones in my life <laughs> that usually people get celebrated for so i'm trying to make myself feel confident enough to like ask people to come for the launch and like tell my, the people in my life about it and like try and not downplay it too much because i feel like it's probably one of my biggest achievements even though it's 
not like the biggest thing in the world and other people are making humans i guess but like this is what i'm birthing and i'm trying to like own that without having some kind of british embarrassment about it how long do you give a book before you dnf it so i used to give a book 100 pages before dnfing it i'm thinking of changing that number <laughs> to 50 just because i read this book called 4000 weeks about how we only have 4000 weeks in our life i honestly while i want to give books a chance i honestly can't think of a book that i have personally loved and has become one of my favorites that i didn't like for the first like 100 pages like that's that's too generous and i think maybe 50 pages is more realistic but i'm trying to ditch books more and that's certainly a lot easier now that i'm using like a library app because i haven't paid for it so i can just return it and somebody else can read it i think it often helps to see like objects like books and even like the digital books as as finite resources so when i'm reading a book from a, from the library and i'm not enjoying it i'm like well i really honestly should give this back because somebody else might be waiting to check it out or stumble upon it on the shelves and be enjoying it so really this book isn't it's kind of like when you're dating you're like i'm wasting your time because you need to go and find your person and i'm not her <laughs> so um i'm trying to get into that mindset more go to karaoke tune <laughs> I kind of forgot that I like karaoke so much and I went out for Hannah's birthday and we went to a karaoke booth and I had such a great time that I'd kind of remembered my love for it but my go-to karaoke tunes are why don't you come on over Valerie because it's usually really low and if you're drunk you can still hit all the notes and the same with Back to Black just anything Amy Winehouse works but then I also realised that I really like singing what good is sitting all alone in your room come hear the music play that is a great one and even if people don't know it they get excited by the end <laughs> do you miss working in an office sometimes um so for those of you who don't know i quit my job during the pandemic <laughs> to seek my fortune outside of london usually people seek their fortune by going to london uh, uh, but i have found that in the year of our lord 2022 you kind of have to leave london to seek your fortune which is illogical but here we are so yeah i quit my office job and i work from home as does my boyfriend craig so i'm not alone completely when i'm working from home i think if i was and i have worked from home on my own before i'd struggle a little bit more mainly to get motivated you know it's not actually that i get lonely it's that i need somebody there fictionally see like secretly judging me because if i don't do work and if they see that i'm just like scrolling stuff on the internet on my screen like i feel shame so i feel like i like psychologically need somebody there to watch me <laughs> but he's obviously not watching me but you know what i mean so it is really helpful and i also found open plan offices which is apparently the only option uh you get if you work in publishing to be really like not conducive to good mental health for me <laughs> i found them really i'm i think i don't respond very well to like overstimulation and like lots of distractions in my eye line loads of like stuff going on around me loads of interruptions like i'm very much like a deep work person i need to like plug in for like 40 to 50 minutes before i resurface if i'm gonna really get anything done so there's so much about it that i don't miss <laughs> to be honest but i think a lot of that's to do with me who i am as a person rather than like anybody i worked with or the, like the, any specific company it's just like the normal conditions of an office make me want to die <laughs> or cry maybe that's more accurate just cry let's not get dramatic however i really do miss random interactions in the kitchen with people i don't miss having to tell people how my holiday was or like come up with some stories whenever I, like after the weekend <laughs> but i do miss just random conversations and in jokes i miss pranks i uh was the instigator and victim of many office pranks and i also miss all the baking like i worked in a lot of offices where people really liked baking but not didn't like eating it so they liked to bring it in and feed it to me so i've learned there's definitely like pros and cons i think when i went into it i was like yeah freelance ever working from home is the best and as we have all experienced during the pandemic <laughs> working from home isn't always the best but on balance i definitely did the right thing names you like for plants children pets anything you want i used to really be obsessed with the name lucy which is maybe what drew me to being my friendship with lucy moon but um i used to name like my hamster lucy like all of my toys were indiscriminately called lucy which was confusing for roll call and like you know when there was a fire alarm but apart from that we all got on well if i was gonna name my plants which i haven't yet i definitely name them like male names like hector moss barry dave i don't know why i love all of those names i'm not a very complicated person and then i think if i had to name a child i think i'd probably go for something like ursula or 
or something, you know? I think I'd go mean with it, which is why you also should bless my choice to not become a parent. <laughs> Are you ever tempted to leave the UK? Where would you move to? Honestly, I feel like there's like a jokey answer to this question and a serious answer to this question because I feel like there's there's this kind of maybe quite Western arrogant way of being like, I could move to any country I want, <laughs> which isn't true or possible or sometimes wise. Then there's also the idea of like having to move to another country because your country isn't safe, uh, which should be something that we all consider to be a possibility at some point. Constant vigilance, etc., etc. Especially with everything that's going on in the, in the news right now. So I kind of, I, I'm kind of hesitant to answer this question just because I get into a bit of an existential spiral about it. But I do have an Irish passport. I am half Irish. My mum is, is Irish, was born in Dublin. So that is like something I could theoretically do in the future. I honestly don't know anywhere else enough to say like, oh, I'd love to live there. <laughs> I've, I've the, probably the place that I've been the most has been like Switzerland, France, and the US. And I can know, I categorically say I've met some of the best people and had some of the best experience in the US, but it is literally like bottom of the list of places I would ever move to. <laughs> I guess the only other place I might say is Iceland. I don't, I, I really don't deal well in heat. So I don't think I'd want to go any more south than I already am. <laughs> but honestly, as I've got older, I've been more attached to that, that quote from Michael Moore that's like, I refuse to live in a country like this and I'm not leaving. So I feel like if there was a, well, I mean, there constantly is a problem with the British government, but if there were things that made other people want to leave, I would want to stay. And I don't, like if they passed a law I didn't like, or if things went south politically, I think I would try and stay for as long as I could because I don't know, that's just how I feel. And and like with a lot of people, I think like, you know, this is this is where I'm from. This is my, this is my country. This is where I get free healthcare for now. <laughs> I honestly think the more I read about, you know, economics and the rest of the world, like it, it's kind of, half of me would feel like it's insulting to say I'd want to live anywhere else because I know how lucky I am to live here. Although if <laughs> the North wanted to declare independence, as, as is a thing that people are actually fighting for and the, they do make some good points, then I would 100% make sure I was over the border <laughs> and split myself off from the south of England because I honestly think most of the problems have stemmed from the south and are made by the south. <laughs> oh, somebody asked what my most controversial opinion was, maybe it's that. What is your biggest learning from failed relationships and friendships? Without sounding cliche, I, I didn't understand when I was growing up that some people are just meant to be in your life for a season, <laughs> which sounds so like fridge magnety. Um, but it, it's true. And I think that I probably have like more friends than is normal from childhood. That Christian trauma bonding though. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But I do think that there's nothing wrong with these films, but like loving films like Beaches and The Notebook and ones where people like stay with their childhood people forever. Just put like unfair expectations uh, on and, and probably like ruined some relationships and friendships for me because of like those kind of influences on my idea of what a friendship or relationship should be. Does that make sense? Are you at peace with your body? Do you ever look, long to look different? I would be lying to you if I said that I didn't ever long to look different. I think the category of body in my head no longer matters to me as much because I'm older and I don't care and I've got more perspective and I'm just tired of thinking about it. Like I'm just bored of it. It's boring to me to be insecure about my body now. <clears throat> but if, if this makes sense to you, within that category of body insecurity, I definitely still have it quite a bit sometimes. And, uh, and just because the category has shrunk doesn't mean that the feelings within that category aren't still there. It's just that it doesn't take over my life as much. And I also know that like, I don't care as much about what other people think about my body. And I wouldn't be as willing to accept any criticism about my body because I know intellectually how I feel about my body, even if I don't always emotionally feel that. Does that make any sense? But yeah, I'd be lying if I said that I was like completely body confident. I became a teenager in 2003. That's got to do something to people. <laughs> but I think sometimes we push ourselves to feel really confident about our body or like love ourselves. For me, it's more been about shrinking that category and like shrinking how much time that takes up in my life, shrinking that category and how important it is to me. And also just realizing that we're all just like flesh puppets being flung around this strange rock and that ultimately, what am I trying to say? Ultimately, I've got to say something meaningful at the end of the sentence sentence. Ultimately, crumpets taste nicer than skinny feels. Was that deep enough for you? Somebody asked, what's the best puzzle you've done recently? I recently did this puzzle, uh, which is Jane Austen, Zora Neale Hurston, Virginia Woolf, Mary Shelley, and George Eliot having tea. <laughs> 
and then like having a book club together and that was incredibly satisfying. I actually did it in 24 hours because I am unstable <laughs> and it was fun as hell. There's a, they're actually made by this company who makes sustainable puzzles. It's called like Ebo puzzles and the, like it's like a mother it's just like mother run mother owned kind of thing. It's just they're a small business and I, I think they're really cool. So um, hashtag not spawn but I'll leave the link below because it was an incredibly satisfying puzzle to do. Very well designed. <laughs> Is this the riveting content you tuned in for? I hope so. A book you like that you think others might not think you like? I think I know what you're talking about. That would probably be Limmy. He's like a, a Scottish comedian. His comedy is very on the nose and quite obscure and weird. Are you watching us? Keep an eye on us bit here, right? and he wrote this book called That's Your Lot and the humour in it was very dark but incredibly funny. <laughs> And I couldn't help, I couldn't help it. I just think that was one of the funniest books I've ever read. And uh, I should probably read more from him, but I don't know. What can I say? Scottish humour. I think sometimes when people are like, oh, you're like a social justice warrior on the internet. They think that means that you can't like dark humour. And I'm kind of like, no, I love dark humour. It just depends who, whether they're punching up or they're punching down and who's the butt of the joke. And it is incredibly possible to make dark humour jokes that are still like modern and of 2022. Uh, it's just that some people uh, haven't clocked onto the art of that yet. Book recs for under 200 pages for short attention spans. A Library of Unrequited Love is a great translated book from French. The Reader on the 627 is another great translated book from French. <laughs> K Tempest, Brand New Ancients. Yeah, maybe I should like comment below if you want me to just do a video on short books, but there's loads of them. I think like all of my favourite books are short. If you can write a book that's under 200 pages that's good, then there's a certain seal of approval I think short books get from me because I think like writing a short book that's good is even harder than writing a long book that's good. Um, so in itself it makes me think like you're a really good writer. Terracotta Orange, the wrong choice for this. It's too late now, it's on. Or it's not one not. Thank you so much for joining me on this weird romp through my psyche. I honestly don't think no, this lip doesn't work. Hold on. Let's try that again. Here is the final look. It honestly doesn't look much like the reference picture, but that's because I am not as skilled as Katie. To distract from my poor craftsmanship, however, I have these secret weapons. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this pomtastic video. I am perhaps a little bit overdressed. <laughs> for the library but remember we only have 4,000 weeks on this planet why not spend at least a thousand of those in fancy dress <laughs> if you like this video you might like some of these videos just just a guess see if click on one and see if I'm right thank you so much to the gumption club who make these videos possible uh, my name has been Lena your name has been you frogs not out